The Joe's conference made me realize how precious I am in God's eyes. I am capable enough to reach my dream and that He will equip me in every struggle that I'm going through. I was the one who invited her for the Jewels Conference as a gift. The Jewel Conference made it possible to invite different types of women from different situations. Women get to share their own life stories to inspire other women. It's all about to be honest, faith. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us include in our prayers the following intentions flashed on the screen.
Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. We are on the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our Mass presider is Monsignor Albert Venus. Please stand and join the choir in singing the entrance song. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, deeply moved by the death of his friend Lazarus, Jesus performed his greatest sign. He raises Lazarus to life, proving that indeed Jesus is the resurrection and the life. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christi eleison. Christi eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God of mercy in us forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in the same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you risen from them. O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the I am. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can I stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may he revert. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. 
More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For the with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Glory to you, Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sister of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. After this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you've been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. He said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection and the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something to this man would not have died? So Jesus perturbed again came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took him away. They took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, 
Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial hands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. We are on the fifth Sunday of Lent. Just a week away from Holy Week. And we have this beautiful story of the raising of Lazarus to life. Perhaps this is one of the fruit that the Holy Week would like us to experience. An experience of new life. Being raised, you know, from experiences of death in, in many areas of our lives. But let me focus on one character of this multi-layered, you know, um, um, meaning of this episode about the raising of Lazarus. I I'd like to zero in to the person of Martha. Here, Martha said the most incredible thing, something that reveals her character and faith, when she said, but I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. She said to Jesus. It's like saying, Jesus, I may not understand or like what you have done, but even now I still believe you are capable of anything. Isn't that incredible statement of faith? Martha's statement was not so much saying that she believed Jesus could raise her brother. Because at that point, no one among them would expect or would even dare to ask Jesus to raise Lazarus to life. But the statement simply said, Martha would trust Jesus even if he did not raise Jesus to life or Lazarus to life. Isn't that a beautiful kind of faith? Kahit wala po kayong gagawin, walang himala, patuloy akong mananalig sa inyo. Isang napakaganda pong um, pagpahayag ng pananalig sa Panginoon. Naalala ko tuloy yung isang pare, <clears throat> dinadalaw niya yung uh, sa ospital para ipagdasalang isang batang may cancer, dying of cancer. And to console the mother, sabi nga niya ay, you know, perhaps God will be good and still heal your son. Yan ang kanyang binitawang salita sa nanay. At ang nanay naman, nung bata ay tumugon, sabi niya sa pare, you know, Father, God is good whether He heals my son or not. Beautiful. God is good whether He heals my son or not. That is what Martha is saying, my dear brothers and sisters. Even now, I believe that you can do anything. This, the story of the raising of Lazarus is about the challenge to never give up hope. Even in the hopeless situations, we should not be discouraged because God's delays are never God's denials. God's answer is not just to affirm or reward our faith in Him, but to build our character that we may become more and more like Jesus. There is no one in the story, not even Martha or Mary, who believed that Jesus would bring Lazarus back to life after four days in the tomb. So the emphasis in the story is 
how we must learn to cooperate with God in perfect obedience to His will. You know, some 31 years ago, tomorrow, I remember submitting myself to God's invitation. Will you follow me as a priest? Wherever I lead you, it reveals very little, just a very, just a bare and basic call. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, that was 31 years ago tomorrow. It's my priestly anniversary tomorrow. I'll be 31 years as a priest. Well, do not clap that long. I have many faults, failures, but perhaps the clapping must go to God. He never abandoned me. He was always there. You know, of course, an invitation like that demands an unbelievable trust and faith in Him beyond imagining. Why? Because it calls for putting one's hand in God's, who does not promise a rose garden, but promises only that in whatever garden He leads us, be it Eden or Gethsemane, He will be there. Yes, brothers and sisters, He will be there. He will be faithful to our unfaithfulness and shortcomings. Indeed, God was with me through all those 31 years. For if not with Him, I would not be here standing and celebrating this Mass before you. In the story, Jesus gave three commands. And all of them were obeyed. That's why the miracle happened. First, Jesus said, Roll away the stone. So they rolled the stone. Did the people understand why they should roll the stone and expose a stinking corpse? They did not. But it was their obedience to Jesus that did it. They did Jesus. Why did Jesus bother them when He can use His divine power to roll the stone? Well, all we know, sisters and brothers, is that divine power seems to be activated when we cooperate. And divine power is stifled by our non-cooperation. Are we ready to cooperate with Him for the miracles that we are asking for in our lives? Second command was from Jesus. Lazarus came out. And the dead man came out. We do not know what happened inside the tomb. But what we know is that even the dead obey the command of Jesus. Truly, even the darkness of the tomb is not dark for Jesus. Many of us are dead way before our real death. We are experiencing death because of our sins. Many are already in the tomb of hopelessness and decay. But there is no hopeless case for Jesus. What's what the story of Lazarus is telling us. The power of God's words gives life to us. But are we ready to face, to take the first step to come out of the place of death? This Holy Week, we have that chance. The third command is addressed to the people, to the community gathered there. When Jesus said, unbind him, let him go. The raising of Lazarus from death is not the sole responsibility of God, but also of the community. Because there is no way for Lazarus to, uh, to unbind himself. He needs the community to do that for him. By unbinding Lazarus and setting him free, the community is accepting Lazarus back as one of them. Brothers and sisters, we need to untie one another and set each other free 
by our forgiveness and unconditional love. Are we ready to unbind and forgive one another and let them go free by our forgiveness? The season of Holy Week invites us to examine our hearts. Look at people who have hurt us, who have caused us misery and pain. People <clears throat> we thought we cannot forgive. And people we have hurt. We have pained by our wrongdoings. Sisters and brothers, unbind them by the gift of forgiveness. Misang po ay may lumapit na isang babae. <clears throat> Kinwento niya ang kanyang renewal story. 20 years ago, sa daw ay nagpalaglag. Sabi niya ay, dugo pa lang naman yun eh. Pero, isang araw, after years of denial and buried memories, the reality hit her. Sabi niya, nagsimba po kami mag-asawa. Sabi niya, Monsi, napansin ko yung mag-inang katabi ko. Inihele-hele niya ang kanyang bagong silang na baby. Nainggit po ako dahil hindi kami nagkaanak ng aking asawa. Pagkatapos, sabi niya sa isang iglap, Naisip-isip ko kung hindi ko napuspun ang pagkaroon ng anak, siguro'y hawak-hawak ko din ang aking baby. But what started as passing thought quickly grew to a devastating grief. Kasi sabi niya, na-realize ko po, hindi na pala sa baby. Mahigit 20 years na yon, So she must be 20 years old by now. At sabi niya, that thought, Move me to cry. Napahagulgul po ako, Monsi, sabi niya. I never experienced such pain, turmoil, as it was only now that the full impact of my sin of abortion was revealed to me. Kaya sabi niya, siya daw ay umuwi, napakabigat ang kalooban. At ang kanyang konsyensya ay talaga namang binabagabag. Ngayon lang niya ito na pagtanto. Horrible thoughts, unanswered questions filled my head, sabi niya, as we went home, crying for hours in bed, but trying to convince my husband it was just a migraine attack kasi hindi naman siya yung tatay ng bata. But praise God, sabi niya, yung mapait at mabigat na nandaming ito, naging isang biyaya. Kasi ito ang ginamit ni Lord na paraan upang makalabas ako sa libingan ng aking nakaraan. Lumapit daw sa, sa isang pari upang makampisal. At sa gabay ng paring yun, na bigyan, tinimuksang bigyan ng pangalan yung kanyang anak na pinaabort. At gamitin ang pangalan na yun, no? para humingi ng tawad sa kanyang baby. At yun din ang pangalan, kasabay ng pare, ay bininyagan. Bininyagan ng pare, gamit ang pangalan, at gamit ang banal na dugo ng Panginoon, invoking the blood of Jesus. At sabi niya, napaka-gaan ang pakiramdam ko. It was a wonderful healing experience, lalo na nung ibinigay na sa akin ang kapatawaran. No? Ang basbas sa kumpisal. Pero sabi niya, God is full of ex- surprises. Bakit? No? Kasi sabi niya, hindi nagtapos doon sa blessing na confession. The following um, Sunday, nung kami nagsimba, sabi niya, may isang batang babae daw, mga seven years old, lumapit sa kanya. Kinalabit siya at pilit ipakita sa kanya ang hawak-hawak sa kanya nakatikom na kamay. At nung binuksan daw yung nakatikom na kamay, ang laman nito ay isang keychain. At nakakabit sa keychain, isang maliit na baby. 
plastic baby. Nagulat daw sa at natulala. Hindi sa makapaniwala sa makita. Hindi niya kilalang bata. Napaiyak na lamang siya sa galak dahil lang sumagi sa kanyang isipan. Ito ang sign mula sa kanyang anak na yung kanyang paghingi ng tawad has been accepted. At ito rin yung pahiwatig ng Panginoon na hindi lamang sa pinatawad, siya ay nahilom at napalaya na. God has healed her and made her whole again. Mga kapatid, tatlong mga salitang ibinibigay ng Panginoon sa atin bago tayo papasok sa mga mahal na araw. Sabi niya, alisin niyo ang bato. Ano ang umahad lang sa ating lubos na pagtalima at ganap na pagtupad sa mga utos at kalooban ng Diyos sa ating buhay? Pangalawa, lumabas ka, sabi ng Panginoon. Ano-ano ba ang libingang patuloy na kumukulong sa atin? Pangatlong kataga ng Panginoon, kalagan niyo siya, bayaan siyang lumakad. Mga kapatid, sino-sino ba ang dapat nating palayain sa ating pagpapatawad at muling pagtitiwala? Brothers and sisters, this is what Lent is all about. To open ourselves to the mercy God desires to pour into our souls and through us to others. You know, Lent is not so much about doing something for God. It is about letting God do something beautiful for us. Amen. Please stand. As the celebration of Jesus' Paschal mystery approaches, let us pray to the Father that we may come to share more fully in the life that Christ brings us through His suffering, death, and resurrection. We call on the Lord, Lord of life, hear our prayer. Lord of life, hear our prayer. That the church, the people of God, may radiate hope to the world ever in agony because of poverty, terrorism, natural calamities, ethnic wars, and man-made disasters. We pray. Lord of life, hear our prayer. That media practitioners may have respect for the dignity and good name of the human person as they cover events and help expose corruption and wrongdoings in society. We pray, Lord of life, life hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the poor, the sick, and the handicapped may see God's presence in their lives by the support of their families and friends. We pray, Lord of life, hear our prayer. That those who, like Martha and Mary, suffer the loss of their beloved ones may be strengthened by their faith in Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. We pray, Lord of life, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died may be welcomed into the company of the saints and together sing the eternal praise of God. We pray, Lord of life, hear our prayer. God of life, Jesus our Lord has overcome death for us. Help us to rise from our weakness and despair, believing that nothing can ever separate us from your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
To God the Almighty Father, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with yours. Lift spirit. up your hearts. We lift them up to Let the us Lord. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity in the human race, he lead us by the sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. found of our holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a Jewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of fate. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of light and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking with the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread to all the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jesse, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you through all the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With love and devotion, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the <clears throat> power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. We offer each other a sign of peace. the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. 
Happy indeed are we invited to receive him in this banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh, yeah. 
brothers and sisters, I invite all of you to stand up and just continue to feel God's wonderful presence and just feel Jesus in our hearts whom we have just received in this sacrament. I invite you to lift up your hands as a sign of surrender and cry for help, for desperate need. And just remember how faithful, how kind God has been to us. Father in heaven, we thank you that even in our human weakness and in our frailty, in times when we forget how great you are, remind us, be our strength and our courage when times get rough, when we are tempted to give up. We lift up our hands now and worship you as we remember your kindness and your faithfulness. Sing out to him now. I lift my hands to believe again. You are my refuge. You are my strength. As I pour out. 